Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? So, the gold standard is resin. You know, it's not around for 60 years because, uh, you know, some trial by fire. That I mean, it's a standard that, you know, people know. People know that Resolite is the way to go. Okay, how do we get a hold of you? Roberts Wrestling at Outlook.com. Kevin Roberts, Facebook. Roberts Wrestling, Instagram. You know. Tim Flynn out there in beautiful West Virginia. Can we see the backyard real quick before we give you your introduction? Oh, yeah. Oh, there man. It. Look at that. Look at that. That is unbelievable. How far are you from Morgantown proper, Coach Flynn? Um, well, my address is Morgantown. I'm probably about six and a half miles from uh, the Coliseum. The Coliseum, so, and that's where the wrestling room is, just outside of the Coliseum, yeah. right? Yep, right next door. You are in, Is it actually hooked to it or not? No, no, we're separate. So separate. You're, you guys are a standalone. Your facility is incredible at WVU. It is unbelievable. Yeah. But real quick, quick introduction of our guest tonight. We have a head coach at West Virginia University, Tim Flynn. He was the former head coach at the at Edinburgh for the Fighting Scots. He led them to a third place finish in 2015. Uh, one of the most impressive finishes in NCAA history, any team, any division, what Coach Flynn did at Edinburgh. Uh, then Coach took his talents to Morgantown, West Virginia, where he had – you had your first All-American this year, right, Coach? Yeah, we had – Noah was the All-American last year. You know, they named the, – yes. he was yes. named first team. Yes. And then Killian placed seventh, so second. Oh. Second yeah, we honor American, that technically, yes. Yeah. Your first one at the tournament, second one in the program history of you being at WVU. Coach Flynn was an All-American for Penn State and the Nittany Lions, so he has been to some power programs. He's been there. He's done that. Uh, I've learned a lot of things from him, things like these are hands, not magic wands. I learned that one from Coach Flynn one day when he was talking to his team about transforming people into <laughs> into killers and better people and, and better wrestlers. I, that was one of my, when you said that dude, I lost my mind. Do you even remember saying that? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Louie and I used to say that a lot. Coach Roselli and I, that was a famous line. Their hands, not wands. So uh, not a magic what, trick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what you, I'll tell you what, from what you did for the years I covered you guys at Edinburgh when I was with Flo wrestling, from what you did there and what I saw happen, you already had it rolling when I came in in like 2008, 2009. You guys were all, you know, already really good. You'd already won the, you know, EWL multiple times in a row. And, you know, you're on a streak, but I didn't, I couldn't believe it. When you guys hit what you hit in 2015, it was, an, it was like pretty improbable what you did. And you did that with four scorers, didn't you? Four placers, right? Yeah, well, I think, yeah, we well, had, we had four placers. Had mines. This might have been top twelve as well. Yeah, mines so. was round of twelve. Yeah, wow. he had a good year. Oh my goodness, you had yeah. another. What well, you had two thirds. You had Vic Avery was third. Shop was third. Port was runner up. Dave Habit was runner up, and then round of twelve yeah. for Corey Mines. Was that is that right, Coach? Yeah. Yep. Team trophy back to Edinburgh. It was incredible. I don't think it's the highlight of Tim Flynn's career yet because what I saw to you guys last year in a dual meet, you guys were in a war with Cleveland state last year. And I loved calling it. That was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome, man. Um, and that was your guys' your So talk about this coach Flynn. your guys' evolution at Edinburgh. You used to be in where you are at WVU, which is in the big 12. Now you used to be in the EWL. I actually covered WVU when coach Turnbull was the coach. How crazy is it to see the evolution of wrestling and what has happened over the years here, meandering into leagues and now Edinburgh's in the Mac and not the EWL's defunct. It's a part of the Mac. What has that evolution been like for you to see? You know, it's been kind of crazy, but you know, as far as how it's affected me, it's kind of cool because a lot of the alumni here 
you know, I know them. I, I re, you know, I either recruited them or we wrestled against them so many times. So, you know, knowing the history of West Virginia, you know, being in the Eastern Wrestling League, you know, I kind of, at least I know a lot of the alumni, at least, you know, we're friendly, you know, obviously not real close, but I, I think it, you know, that, that helped me a little bit with the transition, you know, knowing some of the, and, you know, obviously knowing the old coach Turnbull, um, you know, he's still in town and helps out, you know, and gives me some guidance. So, you know, that part of the, you know, past has really helped. When you look at, what you guys have done and you know, what you did at Edinburgh. And then, the, you know, a lot of people, the natural progression is to go to power five conferences, what we call WVU, right? The power five is what PAC 12 sec, which doesn't have wrestling PAC 12 does sponsor it. ACC big 10, big 12, right? That's our, that's our power five conferences. Yeah. Obviously that's the goal for everyone. The way I thought about it with you and when I covered you guys at Edinburgh, I was like, yeah, this guy's happy here. He, he's content. And when you, you know, made the move up into the power five conference WVU, I was a little shocked. I'm not going to lie to you. And now looking at what you guys have done there and how you've kind of transferred the culture, you literally took your whole staff with you. Right. Yes. Was it easy to get it rolling? How you guys have got it rolling now? How, I mean, how hard was that? Because, you know, I don't know if a lot of people believed what you guys are going to be able to duplicate what you did in Edinburgh, which you haven't yet, but you're well on your way to doing that. Was that hard to duplicate and bring that staff along with you and get things rolling the way you've gotten them rolling this year? Yeah. I, you know, as far as was it hard to bring my staff, I think they, they wanted some of the same things I wanted. I think they wanted to, you know, and the way we describe it is just deal with different problems. You know, we didn't want to, you know, raise money for scholarships, uh, we just wanted it, you know, a, a little bit different, I guess, uh, you know, like I said, I guess different problems. So um, it wasn't hard to convince them to come down. They were ready, I think, to, to make a change, you know, as was I. Um, so, you know, as far as getting it rolling, it was a lot harder than, than I thought it would be, you know, you know, and people talk about the word culture and, you know, and not to pick on the guys that were here, it, it's difficult for kids to, go through a transition, you know, they have, you know, expectations from one guy and then another guy comes in and, you know, maybe even a third coach for some guys, it's, it's difficult, you know, for them, but, you know, I think we now have, you know, kind of kids that know what we expect, you know, and, um, and that helps a lot, but it was a lot of work. It's been, um, it's been a long three years, you know, a lot of losing, we finally got more wins and losses last year. I think we poked ourselves into the, you know, uh, dual meet rankings. So, you know, for us, normally I'd be like, ah, oh, you know, that's, that's not very good, but man, you know, you got to step back and say, you know, we have done some good work and, and I think there's some, you know, a lot of good things to come. You touched on um, the culture, right. And Zeb mentioned the power five and off air before we hit record we talked about name image and likeness now being at wvu does that change things obviously edinburgh's at edinburgh it's a little different and then you're in a bigger program and now you know covid coming off covid now this what 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 what's your thoughts on that um well there's probably more opportunities for kids for the nil you know at a bigger school or in a bigger environment um i don't know if it's going to affect us a ton you know, kids can go out, I, which is a good thing, uh, you know, and, and make some money, you know, from their name. Um, I, I always did think certain things were a little bit, um, I don't know, goofy's the wrong word, but a little funny how, you know, you know, we could pay a first year kid X number of dollars at camp. And then the national champ had to make, I don't know, he worked two years at camp. So he made $20. $25 more. Oh, it didn't really make much sense. You know, kids couldn't get paid as a clinician. There were just a million little things. And you're just like, you know, you can see how these, you know, these different sports are like, well, wow, this doesn't make any sense, you know? Um, so there's a lot of good in it, you know, and these kids can go out and make some money and, um, you know, we'll help them do that, you know, you know, or we encourage them to do that, you know? Um, so I think it's a good thing. Hopefully, uh, Hopefully it's a good thing for our sport, 
but um, you know, I guess time will tell. Coach, you brought up fundraising, right? And you know, that was one of the moves. One of the reasons you moved from Edinburgh to WVU is you don't want to fundraise as much anymore. And that was a big part of the job at Edinburgh was fundraising. You guys actually had to fundraise scholarships. Talk about, you actually have two doctors. One was a national champ. One was an all American for you, two brothers who fund a scholarship at Edinburgh, right? You know, that's something that's easy. Those guys are proud to do that, but you got to go fundraise those other ones. First off, talk about fundraising the scholarships and what went into the job at Edinburgh and what made it kind of easy to, to make the jump to WVU and not having to do that anymore. Who, first off, who does the scholarships? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously at, at a, you know, a bigger school, the scholarships are provided by the, by the school, you know, we do still fundraise. I mean, we have to, you have to fundraise for your volunteer coach your RTC or club or both. Um, but again, you're fundraising for different things. You know, right now we're, we're fundraising to try to get some, you know, upgrades in our facility, you know, and I think when you're at a smaller school, it's just so much, you know, you can't stretch those dollars, you know, you've got to pay for the athletes first and foremost. So, you know, you weren't able to go out and maybe get the extras that you can get, you know, at a power five school, you know, because you are afforded, you know, the 9.9 scholarship. So, you know, that's been a, that's been a real blessing. So, you know, I'm still tickled about that, you know, going into my fourth year. So I'm still pretty excited that, you know, we are fundraising for, like I said, the extras in a program and um, you know, it just makes my life a little bit easier. King or, brothers, right? Do the King brothers, they, the Kings. They, yeah. They you know, they, those guys, yeah. Those guys are loyal. They're loyal to, to, you know, Edinburgh and, and the program there and they should be, you know, um, but I think if you build the right culture, <clears throat> kids are loyal to the program, you know, whether you're at, you know, uh, Penn State, Ohio State, West Virginia, Edinburgh. Um, so I think if you have the right kids and the right culture, um, that loyalty is to the program, the staff, um, their teammates. Um, so I don't know if it's, you know, just uh, specific to one place, but, you know, if you get the right environment, I think, you know, kids will have that loyalty. Do you bring Noah back for two more years or one more year? He's, you know, he, <laughs> he's graduated. He, he graduated and he's looking for a job. He's, he's not coming back. Job. He has another he's year. Not he's coming back. back. Wow. Yeah. He has, two, he has had two the years. opportunity for another year for him. Now. Yeah. He wants to be a cop, you know, cop. And, and yeah. And, you know, he, he was a really good student. Um, you know, it surprised us, but, uh, um, you know, this is why these kids go to school is to go out and get a job. And yeah. he came in and, and talked to me and said, Hey, listen, I, I think I'm, I'm done. I, I really want to get a job. And, um, you know, obviously disappointed is the right word, you know, for me, because I just see so much potential. I think this is a kid that could be, you know, on a national team or world team. I think he's just gifted athletically, but, you know, he's been such a great ambassador for our program um, really the face of the program for a couple of years, you know, and it, you know, the kid says, Hey, I'm ready to go get a job. And I have this lined up and he, he's got it well planned out. You know, we wish him well, and he's going to be a great ambassador for our program. So Killian comes back. Killian's oh. back. Killian's back. Who else is coming back for you guys? That's like now you know, the, the I Hall guess class. the two big ones are Killian and Peyton Hall. Peyton lost in the round of 12 last year. Um, and Killian was an All-American. So they'll, they'll be two of our leaders for sure. Peyton's a stud. He's from West Virginia. Hey, Jared, Peyton Hall's a Schmitty guy. Just so you know. say, oh, he's a Schmitty guy. Years ago, Smitty would say, hey, check this guy out. And he'd send me clips. I think he was like a sophomore in high school. And Smitty's like, check this guy out. Check this guy out. And I'm like, all right, Smitty. All right, Smitty. Yeah, he's a Schmitty guy. Yeah, he, He's all over that guy. Okay, so you talked about fundraising. You uh, recently just hired Kyle Bradkey, right? What is Kyle Bradkey's role at WVU and WVU wrestling? He, um, he's the CEO. No, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's you. Kyle's the, uh, he's the director of operations. Um, 
But, you know, to be honest, and I told him this when we were speaking to him, uh, you know, his role is to help in everything. I mean, if we got to vacuum the floor, we're, we're all in there cleaning. And um, but he keeps us on task. He's, he's uh, just making sure we're all doing what we need to do. You know, obviously there's specific things he has to do, but really that's it. He's uh, he helps in all aspects. I, I can't emphasize that enough you know it's just nice to have somebody keep you on task and and keep you organized and today him and Mitchell were you know they're in there getting gear for the guys and just everything but um he he's been a real blessing already and and uh he's obviously doing a good job with the social media stuff for our program um I know we're getting a lot more uh content out there which which is good for our program and and um so, so far, so good. We love Kyle. So he's a utility man. Basically, he's a utility man. <laughs> utility. Yeah, I, I think of it as a grander. That's why I said CEO. <laughs> I love it. So you guys brought, because he's from West Virginia. So he moved up mm-hmm. from Austin, Texas, because he was working with Flow Wrestling. He's a pretty good guy. Like I like him. Only thing I have against him, he's a bobcat. Ah, he's a bobcat. We'll look past that. But, you know, we just lost our other bobcat, so... You know, it's good to keep one bobcat in there, I you guess. lost Cody? Yeah, Cody Cody got a job outside of wrestling. Did he? Um, yeah, he's, he moved back to his uh, hometown. So um, 20 minutes from me. Oh, is it? Yeah, Northfield, Twinsburg. Yeah. yeah, I'm about 20. Yeah, we were, we were sorry to see Cody leave. We love Cody. Um, but, you know, we understood. And, and uh, you know, we're in the process of trying to hire a volunteer. Okay. So you're in the process. Are you, do you have names? I mean, I'm, I'm not asking for names, but do you have like a list that you guys are, Hey, we're down. We do. We do. We, yeah. yeah, we do. Um, yeah, we, we have a couple, I think pretty good candidates and, and, you know, we're not rushing it. We, the, the goal is really to get it right. You know, just someone that fits. And, um, I don't think we're too terribly hard to work for. Um, you know, as long as you love wrestling and you like being in there, long hours. So then we're easy to get along with. So talking to your coaching tree and obviously going back to Edinburgh, we, we had Dave Habit on a few episodes ago. Awesome guy, just all around. Like you said, uh, typical guy. We, we're at a tournament in June and here he was coach and helping coach and here is cleaning up trash, rolling up mats, but, uh, you know, <laughs> first time head coach, right. Up, up in North, Northeast Ohio. What, what words of advice do you have for a first time coach, you know, someone like Dave or, you know, one of your, you know, does he reach out to you for advice or do you keep in touch with him um, or something you have to say? We, to yeah. Him? We, we spoke a little bit, you know, when he was, uh, you know, considering, you know, making a move, you know, he was at Michigan training and um, you know, I don't think he wants to compete anymore. So, you know, I knew he was doing that. So I did speak about this job and some others. Um, yeah, I guess my only advice is just keep that same work ethic, you know, and they, they know, they know what to do. If, you know, if a kid comes up in a, in a, what I feel was a good program, you know, obviously I was there, I'm biased. Right. Um, it, it, you know, just keep the same, I guess, approach is, you know, we try to, you know, train the guys hard and treat them, treat them, you know, well, but, you know, sometimes I always tell, you know, recruits parents, it's like, I'm going to treat your son you know, like my son, but that's not always a great thing. It doesn't mean it's all, you know, hugs and kisses. So, you know, you got to be hard on the kids and, you know, they come expecting you to help them get a degree, help them, you know, be the best wrestler they can be. So, you know, that, that's not always, uh, uh, you know, friendly rainbows. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. It's not always like, yeah, you know, just, giggles and laughs i mean sometimes you know you got to get on somebody so but yeah just keep keep the grind i guess i got a a a really good analogy for that off camera for you guys about everything how they sunshine puppies rainbows and cotton candy i have another one that uh flynn may be potentially be able to use in a post-match uh speech or something so we'll uh we'll hold that one for off camera just remind me of that but coach he says coaching tree right i think roselli I think uh, Roby, right, and then and then Clemson, Hill, Yetzer, Shop. I'm missing some guys. You know, obviously all the guys on your staff, uh, Port. 
There's some other guys I'm missing that are Edinburgh guys that are out with either head coaching yeah, jobs. Coaching. Gibson at uh, VMI. Oh, Gibson with Jim Gibson VMI. Yeah. So and I his, love it. So yeah, we've got a couple out there, I guess. It's unbelievable. When I look at it, like you guys got a really good central Michigan has a really kind of people don't, they got a low key coaching tree. That's, you know, a lot of people don't know it, but they got a really good coaching tree. What do you think that is? Why, you know, obviously the Iowa coaching tree from the the seventies and eighties and nineties is still alive, but what do you think? And Oklahoma state, but what do you think goes into, you know, producing good head coaches? Like you've been able to do you Bruce Baumgartner, Mike Deanna before that, how have you guys been able to do that? You know, I think maybe it's, it's, you know, you get the right kids, you know, it comes still down to recruiting. You get kids that really have a passion for the sport. Um, I, I think that's the biggest thing you're, you're finding guys that want to be involved in wrestling. You know, you have guys that don't want to be involved or, Hey, I'm done. And, you know, I want to go be a, you know, a stockbroker or whatever. And we have kids that, man, this is pretty cool if I can make a living and, you know, doing what I love to do. And maybe we made it look too, you know, like too much fun, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so oh, we, maybe that oh. was it. I fooled them. I fooled him. When people would talk about Edinburgh negatively when I would go there, you know, because I obviously come to, I used to come to Morgantown and I go to Edinburgh and it's pretty opposite ends of the spectrum as far as the conference, but all the state schools in, in Pennsylvania, you know, the PSAC schools, um, the facilities are all pretty similar, like a dungeon type wrestling room. Right. And, uh, you know, the facilities weren't equal, but the schools could flat out wrestle. Clarion could wrestle. Lockhaven could wrestle. Bloomsburg had really good teams. Why are those teams so tough? How were you able to take what you had at Edinburgh and bring a team trophy back to Edinburgh? And then how do you duplicate that? You said culture already. But how do you duplicate that? Now you guys got a yeah. standalone facility. One of the best campuses in the United States of America. Power five conference. How do you take what you had at Edinburgh and take it to, to, to Morgantown, West Virginia and bring a trophy back there before you're done? I think you just got to get the team to buy in and, you know, ultimately it, it's, it's really this, uh, you, you've got to have a, a handful, whether it's four or five, six, eight guys that, that are really good. And, and the neat thing about our sport is you don't need, um, I don't need to recruit 25 superstars. You know, if you have a couple pretty darn good guys and some other solid guys, there's only 10 weight classes. So, you know, it's just not, it's not as big of a mountain as people think, you know, you get, you know, I can go out and recruit a kid this year. And if he's going to be a, you know, a three-time all American or a national champion, that's that's a lot of points. One kid can stick you in the top 25. So, you, you know, it's not, um, I don't know. It's not rocket science. I just have to get, you know, a, a bunch of talented guys in the room and let, let them grind. And hopefully, you know, we, we get a couple to bubble up and, and, you know, we'll be a top five, top three, and hopefully, you know, compete for trophies. So I think we lost Zeb there, but you know, piggybacking off that being at, at WVU, what has changed? Has anything changed for, as far as recruiting since now you're kind of out of that, you know, PA bubble or, you know, what has changed for you? Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing that changed for us now that we have, um, I guess we, we've kind of got, you know, we're, we're in a different place. I, I think we have a pretty good reputation. The kids on campus are good kids. Our, our grades are good. Um, we're getting looks from not only better kids, but more kids, you know, in general, more kids want to go to bigger schools and smaller schools. Right. You know, there, there's a place for everything. You know, there's a market for every type of car, but you're not going to find many people looking for a dump truck or a, right. Or, right, right. you know, it, it's just, it, there's certain things, you know, everybody has a different, uh, I guess, wish list and what they want from a school and more kids want a bigger school, you know, and now that we've had, a, you know, we got, I think we've got it turned around in the right direction 
we're getting looks from more kids and more kids should look at it. We, they treat the student athletes unbelievable down here. We have great facilities where, you know, we have a great, you know, conference and schedule. So I, I see, you know, no reason why every kid in the country shouldn't take a look at us. Right. You mentioned earlier fundraising and you just talk about wish list. What is on that fundraising slash wish list of yours? We're redoing, you know, I want to redo, we have, uh, we're going to redo the wall mats and get some new wraps in the, uh, you know, in the wrestling room, just clean it up a little bit. It's a little 80 ish. Okay. <laughs> you know? Nothing wrong with that, and, but. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with the eighties if you're listening <laughs> to music, but when you're looking at wrestling rooms, yeah. So yeah. our, our room's really nice, but I, yeah, I just, you know, we want to get some new graphics up and, and, um, some new wall mats and, and, I, I just think it, it'll really kind of brighten it up a little bit. So that that's our newest project. Awesome. Awesome. Coach, I'm back. Sorry. I uh, had to, uh, I guess the internet hates my guts here, but uh, what the, uh, the long and the short of the answer that you just gave, you talked about wrestling be unique. I caught that our sports totally different than other sports, right? You said that, right? That's, that's about all I caught as I was getting kicked off. Right. So we can do things in our sport that you can't necessarily do at Edinburgh and football. You can't go and beat West Virginia. It's just not going to happen. Right. Why is it so unique like that? Why do you think our sports so unique? Well, I think, well, one, like I said, you just have less players, you know, your starting lineup is 10, you know, so you, you only need, if you have five, really, really good guys that never lose, you're, you're in every dual meet because it's going to be five, five. Right. So, you know, that that's unique. And I just think, you know, there's uh, right now, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, know how to train guys and know what it takes to get guys to, to a high level. And, and so, you know, you're able to, to train some guys and have great, you know, wrestlers individually at, at these different programs, you know, where, you know, I guess you see it in all sports. So, you know, you see great basketball players rise up out of, you know, maybe some non basketball programs, you know, or smaller schools, you know, might produce, uh, you know, some NFL players. So I, I think you see it everywhere, but you might see it a little more in wrestling. When you guys look at, you know, your chances moving forward with what you've got, what you're recruiting, what you're bringing in. I mean, I look at it, obviously PA's a one, you're nestled right in between Pennsylvania and Ohio. You know, each of them, you can be in each state and, you know, in, in Pennsylvania in 10 minutes, right? From What are you, five, 10 minutes from the border? Um, I'm, I'm already like three miles. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm yeah, close. you're you're, you're, you're under five man. minutes, right, from your driveway. Yeah. So that's good recruiting. You can be over in Northeast Ohio and Eastern Ohio in an hour and 10 minutes, right? Yep. I mean, you're, it's all right there for, for WVU. Yeah. And then obviously West Virginia wrestling has gotten a lot better as, as a state. And for uh, sure. when you look at it though, what do you think the biggest thing for recruiting that you guys have to do in order to challenge to win a big 12 title and, and bring another trophy, bring a trophy back to Morgantown? Well, I think, you know, there's a number of things, but one is try to keep, you know, the better kids in the state home. And, you know, we've got a couple of them, um, you know, some, we're not going to get every, you know, great kid out of West Virginia, but boy, we got to try to get, you know, we did a really nice job the one year we got Peyton and, and uh, Braden Roberts. Um, you know, we get, we got a couple kids this year and, and we're on a couple more, you know, seniors now. So keep the homegrown talent here and we got to go out and, and, yank some kids from Ohio and New York and Pennsylvania. Um, you know, not that we're not willing to go far away, but we don't have to, you know? So if we can keep some of these kids close to home, um, you know, we'll, we'll be fine. So that's the there, plan. There was a bunch of crazy talk about your conference, right? What is the talk been amongst the coaches administration? What are you hearing about the big 12? What is what's happening with the Big Twelve, right? Like so, Doug, yeah. so Mizzou is back in, right? Missouri's back in, and that's really all I know. You know, we haven't really met as a, as a Big Twelve coaches to discuss, you know, 
everything that's gone on, you know, all we know is, uh, you know, what, what you guys know with, with OU and, and Texas. Um, and we, we don't know much else. So I, I think that's all being hashed out. And, um, you know, I don't know if it's going to affect this year or even next year, but, um, that's way above me, you know, right now <laughs> I got to get Killian Payton and some other guys who win a national championship. So <laughs> you're not worried about conference worried. alignment. And the SEC. I, I, well, I, you know, I'm worried, right? Hey, listen, I'm worried about it. I just, I don't have any say in it. So, you know, it, it's, um, and usually I do try to think everything out and plan everything. But I, if I spend time worrying about that, I, man, I'm not doing my job right now. So that that's our RADs and, you know, our commissioners and all that, those guys' jobs. So I'll stick to mine. Yeah. Stay in your lane. Yeah. Stay in my lane. Yeah. So we need some people to do that. That's, uh, <laughs> it would be, we could get a lot more production uh, out of a lot of people if they stayed in their lane. Uh, Coach Flynn. You are coming to Ohio this weekend, Cincinnati, to the Barbarian Center, uh, mm -hmm. the Barbarian Apparel Center, and you are going to be running the combine for the Ohio Athletic Committee, OAC, and some of the top you know, junior high talent and, and grade school talent in Ohio. Uh, they're going to be there. When you guys come to an event like that, you know, they bring you in and you share philosophy. What do you want kids to get out of you know, meeting Tim Flynn? And what do you want kids to get out of an experience and technique and philosophy from Tim Flynn, who are middle schoolers? Well, I think the first thing you always want when you go to a clinic is you want to, you know, you hopefully teach some kids some useful technique, right? It is a clinic. So, you know, I, I hope that, you know, a couple kids can take some things and, you know, and, and learn some technique that might be helpful. Um, I want them to know, you know, that, uh, I, I want them to be excited about West Virginia and about wrestling in general. You know, I, I think that if kids like you, then, you know, in a couple of years, maybe they'll, you know, want to visit your school, you know? Um, but yeah, I just enjoy helping kids and, and working with kids. You know, it's, um, you know, I've always liked that part of it, you know, just being around the kids, you know, and a lot of times it's so much more fun to go do a clinic than to run a, camp you know if you're running a camp and we run camp and i love it i actually love it more now because i just i do more of the teaching and less of the administration but uh it's just nice you know i i just go out show the technique you don't have to worry about you know any of the other stuff so i'm really looking forward to it this weekend i think you're gonna be impressed with the ba center it, it's gonna be a nice setup and uh I know you reached out a couple of days ago about what should I show? Do you, have you thought about what you're going to show? I mean, I know it's a short I, window. You know, I, I like the show top. I really like, mm -hmm. um, you know, showing legs and some tilts from legs. Um, <clears throat> and I do things a little bit differently than some people do with the leg in. So I might, I, I'm leaning towards that right now, you know, good. Save, <laughs> save mileage on my knees too that way. There you go. Yeah. We need all the help we can get on the mat in Ohio. So <laughs> now thinking of which, how are the bionic joints? How many bionic joints now? I know we at least one hip. How many yeah, bionic I got joints? Two, you? I got two hips. Um, yeah, so that that's it. They've been good. Knock on wood. I, um, you know, I got them in in uh, Euclid. Oh, close to you. That's where my dad got his done at, right? I Zeb then. Yep, my dad got his. Yeah, done. Done in Euclid, huh? I think it's Euclid. What's the name yep. of the hospital there? Is yep. it just Euclid Hospital? Yeah. You're yeah. right. Yep, that's yeah. where my dad got his. Yeah, Euclid. Done. Yeah. Is wow. it? Isn't it an older? It's an yeah. older hospital, yeah. right? Yeah, not real big, right? It's, it's yeah, smaller. Yeah, but it's right, right, kind of close to the water there. Yeah, so that's um, where you got your hips done in Euclid, Ohio. Yeah, the hip guy was, you know, you know, everyone's like, oh, I had the best guy, but this guy's pretty, pretty well renowned, and um, you had to, you know, I know Alex Clemson flew in from Missouri then to get his hips. I think he got his done there, and. Um, yeah, I, I don't, uh, this guy's good. So, um, not the most personable cat, but man, what a surgeon. <laughs> Usually the best ones aren't. Who right? cares if your hips feel good, right? Yeah. You, you know, and, and I, and I don't talk about other jobs or politics, but you know, yeah, if you, if you have a surgeon, I don't want him to be my best friend. Get the I want him to be pretty darn good. Right. 
So yeah, I just wanted to be good at fixing my joints or whatever. It exactly. fixed, but I don't care about if they're nice or bad guys or what. Yep. And right. This guy was good. So. So Sounds far, like he so might good. have some magic wands. He might have some magic he, wands, this guy. He's got a magic scalpel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, coach, when you, you know, you guys, you're really close with a lot of those coaches. I think you guys, is it some of you guys vacation together, a group of you guys. I don't know if it's yeah. like Roby, you and Rosselli. Yeah. Yep. Is that right? Yes. What is that yeah. like when you got a vacation with those guys? And then you got to go battle um. and you know, fight them across the mat at the, the NCAs or if they're in your, you know, in your conference, Coach Roselli's in your conference. What is that yeah. like? Does that ever get weird? No, not at all. I mean, we're, I mean, we're all, I hate to say professional because that's overstating it a little bit. Um, yeah, I made the best team win. You know, Tony's doing a great job. Lou's doing a great job. And um, I'm trying to catch those guys now, you know, um, I, no one is happier for those guys than I am when they do well. When, when Louie won the big 12s and I know Tony, you know, Tony's had some really good teams the last couple of years. Um, you know, I'm real happy for them, but um, it, it's neat going on vacation with them. You know, you have someone who understands, you know, your Louis, um, I think two years in front of me and meaning I think he's just finished his fifth year at Oklahoma. So, you know, he's been, you know, counseling me through these for, he's like, yeah, that, that's what happened to me. And so, you know, oh yeah, we, we dealt with the same problems. Um, it, it's been helpful, you know, so he, he's been really helpful and just having people like him and Tony that the day to day, they, they deal with the same stuff we do. And, you know, you forget that even, you know, at my age and I've been around a while, it's like, you, you think your problems are, are, you know, unique to you and, and they're not, it, you know, kids are kids and it, the same stuff's going on everywhere. And, and it's nice to know and, and nice to just get some advice and see how they're handling different things. So, um, yeah, it's nice, you know, and then obviously just sitting on a beach isn't a bad thing. Where do you guys usually yeah. vacation? Where, what's the, the same spot over here? What's the, yeah, we've been going to Siesta key. It's, it's near uh, Sarasota, mm -hmm. Florida right on the Gulf side. Cool. So, yeah. How much tread is left on the tires? How many more hips do we need? Like, how many do we need both <laughs> knees or play? Like, what is, what's the goal here? You know, the goal, I, I don't really ever have a goal. You know, um, Louie asked me that, you know, recently. And I, I don't have a goal for, you know, I, I don't know if I want to be coaching when I'm 80, but um, as long as I like it, it, you know, the kids keep you young. I, I'm, um, I'm not totally grown up yet. I, I like to play games. I like, you know, we play a team handball and I'm, you know, I'm a lot of times towards the end of the last picks now, which kind of hurts my feelings, but I just <laughs> like being around the kids, you know, and, and I think there's no better job in America than a job in not necessarily wrestling coach, but then a job where you can directly affect someone else's life you know, and seeing these kids get jobs and, and, um, it's, it's a, it's a neat feeling, you know, and helping kids reach their goals. It's, it's really satisfying. So, you know, that, that to me is, I, I don't know if I want to give that up yet. So I guess a little while longer. Speaking on that, you know, and we talked about Edinburgh, what was it like when, you know, Hill took over, right? I mean, Zeb and I know him pretty well and, you know, awesome young man and, you know, seeing, and take over that program, I guess, walk us through that a little bit. Yeah. You know, through, I, you know, I wasn't a part of the <clears throat> interview process, but, you know, obviously I, you know, I spoke to Bruce about some of the candidates and, and their strengths, but I knew Matt was, um, was probably the guy we, I, I think, you know, when we left, I, I felt, I felt like, I don't know about Bruce, you have to ask him. I felt like, Edinburgh needed somebody that was a grad that had that real love of the, the institution and the program, you know, and, and that wasn't using it as a stepping stone, you know, that wanted to be there and, you know, for the long haul. And I think Matt, you know, Matt's that guy. And, and to be honest, he's done a great job is recruiting. He, he's, he's coming with some fresh ideas, which is good. You know, we, we, 
had some things we did over and over and he came in with some different ideas and um i think it's good for the program you know i think he's done a great job and and you know i'm behind him 100 percent. if i can help him you know i do so i'm real happy for matt how often is it hey flynn where did you leave the key to this bottom dr desk drawer <laughs> how often does he give you calls about Hey, is there not, anything in this stuffed in this hole in the wall that you guys lost <laughs> or any extra meal money? Not, not anymore. The, yeah, that? maybe. Yeah, the first year maybe a little bit, but but not not anymore. Matt's Matt's got it going on his own, so he he's doing well. Yeah, they don't make them better than Matt Hill. Great guy, Western PA guy. Is he from Freedom? For sure. Freedom. Freedom. Awesome guy, man. I love that guy. Really good guy. I can't say a bad thing about Matt Hill. He did drop my laptop. Hold on. He dropped my laptop one time and offered to give me a brand new one. And I was like, Matt, it, the laptop's fine. Just <laughs> go about your day. Stop with, <laughs> stop with the giving me a new laptop. But yeah, yeah, he did drop my laptop one time. He felt real bad though to make everybody, to make me at least feel that, you know, he, he didn't mean to drop the laptop. But coach, when you guys look at, you got all these guys, right? All these guys that, you know, you're vacationing with these guys. What is the most important thing about building relationships with people and building these lifelong bonds that you have with people? Like what, what, how are you able to do this? Like what makes you so much different than everybody else? Cause like, you know, people ask, I'm like, my kids could wrestle for this guy. Not that my kids are going to be that level or anything, but you're one of the, you know, whenever someone asks me, you're one of the guys I've told you that before. How are you so good at relationship building and maintaining relationships and being the, the, the guy that you are? Um, I think you have to be sincere is one thing, you know, you have to, you know, really care. Um, but, you know, I mentioned it earlier, you, you know, <clears throat> you have to keep in mind why they're here and why you're there. You know, I'm not there to be their best friend and I'm not there, um, you know, to be their, you know, academic, but I'm there to be their coach, which means a lot of different things. And, and you wear a lot of different hats, but, you know, I, I think in a weird way, it, it's helped me, you know, having children, Zeb, I, you know, you see a different side of kids, you know, like, well, what would I do if my son said this? And in some ways, maybe it's made me softer. You know, it's like, oh, what if Logan or Riley did this? Would I yell at him this hard? And, um, but I, I think if you're really sincere and, and, um, and you care about the guys and, and really want to see them, you know, succeed, I think they they get that, you know, and, and I think that that means a lot to them. So. How old are the boys now? My Ma sons are Man. 23 and almost 21. Oh my God. Uh, that went quick. They're up there. And yeah. One, dad, yeah. Is one in Edinburgh grad. One's an Edinburgh grad and interesting enough, he got a job in a, in a enterprise, uh, um, management training program. So he's living here actually now and working in Morgantown, which it just, it just worked out. So wow. um, yeah, we're tickled about that, you know, but uh, I actually don't see him a lot. He put the, they work hard at enterprise works. Those guys like 12 hour days all the time. Working like dogs. Yeah. That's how yeah, you get tougher so. Flynn. You know that. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm proud of him because, you know, he, you know, he, he swam in high school, but he, you know, wasn't a college athlete. And, and yet he has, you know, he has a really, really good work ethic. So I'm, you know, I've been real proud of what he's doing. That's awesome. And then the other boy, is, is he go to w, WVU? Yeah. Riley's a junior here. Okay. So doing well. Yeah. He does not live with you. No, no. He, but, but he stops over a couple times a week for a free meal and then leaves. So <laughs> laundry and a free, <laughs> he free meal. In about a half hour ago. Yeah. He came in for dinner and left. So. That's awesome. Yeah. He's going to park down. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be a really good experience though. I mean, your kids, you know, one of your kids went to school. He actually stayed up there after you moved down, didn't he? Yeah. And finished yep. up at Edinburgh. And then, yeah. yeah that, wow. That is, he's got the best of all the worlds yeah, yeah. Uh, there, Tim Flynn. I love it. I love hearing it. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I cannot wait to tell you the line that you are going to be able to use pretty, on your guys. For good time. Be, I think it's gonna be awesome. Let's jump <laughs> off here and we'll yeah, talk. Yeah, I know. I can't then, uh, wait. 
let's jump <laughs> off here and then uh but thanks for your time coach i appreciate it but i'm looking forward yeah, to no, thank you we'll, coach we'll you got anything else for us yeah. anything else any stories anything you got for us yeah i went to a wedding this weekend okay <laughs> and so it's mike cassie it was one of our old assistants at, at um edinburgh his daughter got married and, and his ex-wife is good friends with my my wife so we got invited to the wedding and here the girl got married to a uh, Clarksburg guy. Okay. He's a basketball guy. I think he coaches at Niagara. But the point of the story is they're all from, you know, all his buddies are from West Virginia and the pride of this state and, and the pride, you know, you know, they sing country roads and it's, it's like nothing else. You know, th this place is a, a wonderful place. And, you know, I, I, you know, we're, we're going to get this thing up and running and, and it's in the right direction and we're going to start winning at a high level. I know it. There's just too much love for the university and the sport down here. So good things are happening. Does the Mountaineer still come to the duels? Yeah, he lights off that gun when we win. <laughs> Does he shoot the gun? Scares the crap out of it. Yeah, scares the crap out of everyone. Yeah. Hey, what I don't think it's a real Scotty bullet. Burnett, yeah, but I don't keep it. Yes. Scotty Burnett was wrestling at WVU and he got pinned to lose the dual meet. He'll be there this weekend, so he'll tell you the story. Because his son Gray will be there. And he and he uh he got pinned at the Coliseum and the dude shot the gun off as he was getting pinned. Like, you know, he got pinned, they're getting up to raise the WVU guy's hand. They'd won the dual meet because of the pin, and he was at Nebraska. And the dude shot the gun, and he's like, "What's going on? What the hell's going on?" <laughs> hey, so, that that Scotty Burnett is some kind of competitor. So, I remember at camp, we used to go out after sessions and play softball because we didn't want the kids tearing the dorms up. This kid, he was on a softball team with random people. The kids weren't getting hits or fielding. He was chucking his glove and cursing and. I'm like, I got to have this guy. And he, I, 10 or 12, he could probably tell you. But I remember Scotty Burnett way back then. <laughs> awesome. A lot yeah, of his fun. Kid, his kid's really good. You'll see his kid. His kid's a middle schooler, a seventh grader. He? He's really good. Oh, good. Yeah, you'll enjoy yeah. watching him. But, Coach, thank you for the time. Thank you for ch sharing the stories. I'll give you a little wisdom off camera here, and we got to get to get to our next uh, big-time guest. Good deal. Thanks, coach. Yeah, thank you.